Hey, how's it going everyone? So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the 2015 Amazon exclusive Trooper 4-pack. So I recently did a channel member only poll for this, as well as a few others I have sitting over here as far as which one to review first. Infinity's Vader got first place with 58% of the vote. This one came in second place with 33% of the vote. So here we are. But yeah, this set, it came out in 2015, was Amazon exclusive, it retailed for 80 and ever since I started collecting, it's been 120 plus. It's up there. But I found this one on eBay for 50 And after tax and shipping, it was a little over 60 So not a bad deal. Now, the box is a little beat up. It's It's got some rough spots. It's missing a tab there. It's still sealed, you know, so that's good. Now, even though these figures are older, you know, they're almost 10 years old, the articulation is horrendous on these. But still, for 50 bucks, could not pass it up. And as you see, it comes in this rather large box, but that's what the front looks like. You have a picture of each trooper. So this is like the evolution of the Stormtrooper pack. But you got a Phase 1 there, Phase 2, Imperial, and then First Order. The top, you have that, some First Order troopers. That's what that side looks like. And this side, the red side, you just have logos for each faction. The back looks like that. More pictures, some bios. And on the bottom, rotate this around. Bottom, you got the barcode, some more small print, and a price tag. So I guess whoever had this before me paid $119.99. And if I open this up, let's see if I can do this. There are the four troopers. So you got the Phase 1 Clone Commander, a Phase 2, an Imperial Stormtrooper with some poorly done battle damage. That's almost laughable there. And then you have a First Order Officer. So they look good. You know, despite being on old bodies... I still think they look great. All right, I'm going to get these four fellas out of this box, and let's take a look at them. Okay, so I got these four troopers out of the box, and I think as a whole, they all look pretty good, except for this. This is a little silly. I don't know why they just made one with battle damage. That's just weird. Uh, but overall, I think they look great, and as far as, you know, reviewing these or talking about them, I think I'm just going to go in order. So let's start with the Clone Commander first. So the Phase 1 Clone Commander. I love this one. This, this set is worth it just for this guy. The yellow is so nice. It's pretty clean for the most part. I do have some stray yellow back here, right there and right there. I could probably just hit it with some acetone and get that off. I'd have to be super careful right there, you know, so I don't accidentally rub the black off, but that's no huge deal. I mean, it's in the back, but I think it's a good looking trooper. I mean, that fin looks pretty good. The visor, the mouth grill looks nice. I'm loving the little black there. And coming back around to the back, I am so glad they put the red back there. The clone lieutenant, the uh, the blue one, does not have this. And I don't know about the sergeant or the captain. I don't own those. But I'm loving that little bit of red right there. That just, I don't know, I was so happy to see that. <laughs> but that's what the back of him looks like since we're here. The arms look pretty good. The belt looks nice. I love this right there. Those four little dots. It's a good-looking figure, you know, for what it is. The knee pads. Now, of course, articulation is horrible, you know, being on this old clone body. But as a whole, I love this one. And I will touch on articulation really quick. So you have some side-to-side -side at the head and some down. That's it. There is no tilt and no up. So you're kind of limited there. For arms up, no. The shoulder bells run right into the armor. They can rotate around. Now, he does have double elbows, but you can't really use them. That is as far as they go. Okay, this is the old clone body before they made the cutouts there, so it just stops. The, the little pad there for the elbow gets pinched, and that's all you get as far as elbows. That is it, but he does have an upper bicep swivel, and of course the wrist and swivel. He has an up and down hinge on the right hand, but it's very tight. I did have to heat this up, and it's better than it was. But it's still pretty tight. But there is an up and down hinge on the right hand, and the left hand has a side-to-side -side hinge that is super tight. As far as midsection, twist, touch of crunch, a little bit of back, and a little bit of side-to-side -side tilt. And for legs, if you rotate them out, they can get up that far. They go out to there. They go back that much. There is a swivel, you know, thigh cut that is hidden by the armor. Double knees that get up to there before the knee pad. The back of it there gets pinched. Feet go down just to there. They go up that far, and there is some swivel at the ankle. So being on this old clone body, I knew the articulation was going to be very limited, but, man, I love the look of him. And as far as accessories that came with the clone commander, here we have a DC-15 carbine, and this thing was badly warped right out of the box. It's better, okay? I took a hairdryer to it. 
it's better than it was, right? I mean, it was it was pretty bad. It's still a little bent right here. I can probably hit it again, but uh, that's what that looks like. There is a little bit of white paint on this side, okay? Yeah, there's the DC-15 carbine. And here's the DC-15A, the heavy blaster rifle, okay? The one that came with the Commander has some white on it. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, something different. We've seen this many times before, and I like it. And posing the clone commander with the carbine. Okay, there he is firing low from the hip, and that's about it as far as getting him in a firing pose. Okay, you cannot get this up any higher because of the rotten shoulders, the very limited elbows. Yeah, that's it as far as if you want him firing at something. You know, it's not terrible. It's just you're not going to be getting it up here. And of course, you can bring the blaster down a little bit lower, like he's a little more relaxed, and I think that's a pretty good pose. And here he is with the DC-15A. And again, if you want him firing this thing, it's going to have to be from the hip. And that actually does not look bad. That does not look bad. Okay, it looks pretty natural. I kind of like that. And if you want him standing in attention with this rifle, mm, that does not look good. You know, it's longer. The elbows aren't, <laughs> they're just not good. Yeah, I don't really like that. And there he is at a relaxed stance. And that does not look bad. But one thing, you know, to take into consideration, this rifle sticks out so far. It's going to take up a little more shelf space, but this actually looks pretty good. But for now, for display purposes, I think I'm going to keep the commander like this with the carbine, just firing low from the hip, and I think this looks nice. And next, let's take a look at the Phase 2 clone, and I'm liking this. I mean, the paint on the helmet is pretty clean. I think proportionally, it does not look bad. It kind of looks like a guy in a suit. But the helmet, I mean, the visor looks good, the mouth grill, all this in here is well done. The lines there, very clean. The gray going around the back, the black line is pretty straight for the most part. That does not look bad. All this back here looks good. Yeah, the helmet looks nice. I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> of course, the body. It's just white clone armor. Now, the elbow pads and knee pads are a slightly different color white. I'm thinking these are probably done in a black plastic and then painted. You know, but it's fine. It's fine. Overall, it is not bad. There's no paint at all back here. Um... It's just a nice, clean, white Phase 2 clone, and I like it. And, of course, the articulation is going to be very similar on this one as it is the Phase 1 Commander. You've got some side-to-side -side and down. That is it. That, that is it. Shoulder bells, same thing. They can rotate around, and the elbows, of course, are going to be the same, right? That little elbow pad gets pinched, and there's no cutouts in there, so that is as far as the elbows go. Upper bicep swivel, swivel there. And up and down hinge on the right and side to side on the left. Midsection, twist, touch of crunch, a little bit of back and some side to side. And of course, the legs are going to be the same. Same legs, same exact legs, double knees that get up to there. And then feet down and feet up. And I think that's the fastest I've ever ran through articulation, but uh, it's the same as the Phase 1. And as far as accessories for the Phase 2 clone, same as Phase 1. Okay, you got a DC-15 carbine. This one has no paint and this one was warped right out of the box. I did hit this with a hair dryer and it, whoops, and it is better. It's much better, still not perfect, uh, but it's okay. But yeah, there's the DC-15 carbine. And he also comes with a DC-15A and it's fine. There's no paint anywhere, it's just all black, but it's still a cool rifle. And as far as posing the Phase 2 with the carbine, it's gonna be just like the Phase 1, the Clone Commander, same arms, okay? But this pose here, firing low from the hip, I think looks pretty good. But this trooper looks good in a relaxed stance. And I think he looks good standing at attention. And here's the Phase 2 clone with the DC-15A. I'm not going to go through all the poses with this one. It's going to look just like the Phase 1. But, you know, firing low from the hip, I think, looks fantastic. But once again, this rifle is so long, it does take up a little more shelf space. But I do love the look of this. But for display purposes, for the Phase 2 clone, I think I'm just going to have him standing at attention like this with the carbine. And that looks good. And next up, we have the Imperial Stormtrooper. And it's... <laughs> It just looks funny with this battle damage. The figure as a whole, okay, the articulation's really not horrible on this figure. The elbows are actually pretty good. You've got some wacky range in the head. Um, I mean, just crazy tilt. But this battle damage is just weird. It is bizarre how it's just like a perfect circle there, very circular there. This right there on his head, I guess you could say this is the guy that bumped his head on the Death Star door, maybe. Maybe, yeah, but overall, I, th I think the paint does look pretty good on the, the helmet. All these lines in there. Hey, where's my pointer? All these lines in here 
are nicely done. This looks good. The mouth grill looks pretty good. All this is nice. The visor, all right, so the eyes do look a little weird on this helmet. Okay, but it's, it's fine. This is nice. But yeah, the battle damage is just wacky. And of course, it's only on the front. This one does have a holster. Yeah, it's only on the front and here on his thigh. Yeah. It's almost like he was in a game of paintball and just splat, splat, splat. And then whoops, bonk there. And then I don't know what this is. Yeah, so as far as articulation, just like I mentioned, the head has some crazy range, just insane range in the head. Now shoulders, no, they, mm, they go up a little farther than the clones. They can rotate around. Now the elbows on this trooper are actually pretty good. They get way past 90. You got the bicep swivel, swivel at the wrist, and you do have an up and down hinge. And once again, I hit this with a hairdryer, but the wrist hinges are so tight. There we go. Man, that's, mm, I'm gonna have to hit that again. And then you got a side to side hinge on the left, midsection, clicky touch of crunch, some decent back and some pretty good side, actually very good side to side tilt. Legs, same thing, rotate the thighs out. They can get all the way up to there. Okay, not terrible. Thigh swivel hidden behind the armor. This one is stuck. I'm gonna have to heat this up. Yeah, I don't wanna break it. This one's pretty free. And the knees, double knees, they get up to all the way to there. And then feet down all the way feet up a little bit, and then you do have some swivel at the ankle. So the articulation on this old Stormtrooper body isn't terrible. I mean, the elbows are actually pretty good. You can get him in some pretty good firing poses, but I think proportionally, this figure does look a little weird. The helmet's a little big, and just how it's cut in here, it doesn't quite look like a guy in a suit, but I think on the shelf, it's gonna look okay. And the accessories that came with the Imperial Stormtrooper, okay, here we have an E-11, and this is nice, this is, this is one of the nicest E-11s I've seen. You've got some fantastic silver dry brushing throughout. You've got some silver there. I mean, this is a well-painted blaster. I'm loving this thing. And he also comes with a DLT-20A, and this looks good. You know, again, you've got some wonderful silver dry brushing throughout. On, yeah, it's a good-looking rifle. I love this. And as far as posing the Imperial Stormtrooper, okay, firing low from the hip, that looks good. Now this right here is pretty nice for an older figure. These elbows are actually very good. The wrist hinge works very well. He is aiming right down the scope and it looks pretty good from all angles. And here he is at a relaxed stance and here he is standing at attention. Again, these elbows are great. The wrist hinges are actually very good. I think this looks fantastic. And here he is with the DLT-20A standing at attention, and I like the look of that. And there he is in more of a relaxed stance, and this does not look bad. Now, on this particular trooper, the trigger finger is kind of a funny shape. It's almost like it's been flattened or slightly deformed, so it doesn't quite make it through the trigger guard. Um, but that's, I don't know, it's not a bad pose. And there he is with the heavy blaster rifle firing low, just laying down some suppressive fire, and that actually looks very good. And the fact that these elbows are pretty good, you can get the blaster all the way up here, and that does not look terrible. It's better from the side. The front, mm, not quite right, but from the side, I think that looks good. But for display purposes, this Imperial Stormtrooper is gonna go on the shelf just like this, because like this, it hides that ridiculous looking battle damage. So I kinda like the look of that. And last, we have the First Order Stormtrooper Officer, and this is a good looking figure, right? It looks fantastic. The articulation is horrific, but but let's take a close look at this one. Um, the black, deep black on the visor looks very good. You've got lots of fine detail in there. All these lines are very clean. They look great. Got a little something there. Very nice looking helmet. The pauldron looks good. Okay, it's a separate piece, but it looks great. And then you have just regular old first order stormtrooper armor. Got some paint back here. Little bits of black here and there, kind of scattered throughout. There on the belt up here. Some little bits of black through there. It looks great, hands. And this belt looks really good. I'm digging the belt. Lots of fine detail on these pouches. Back here, you got a cool texture going on. And then legs, you know, just more armor. A little place to plug the pistol in. And then right down to the feet. Great looking figure, but let's take a look at articulation because this is almost laughable. All right, so side to side at the head. Not much down, not much uh, touch of up, but no tilt. Arms, they get up that far, not, yeah, not really. Shoulders can rotate around. The pauldron would get in the way on this side. Now elbows, <laughs> God, 
That's it. That's all you got. Now, if they would have designed this little van brace right here, if they had put this cutout in line with the hinge, you'd have more. But this right here just runs right into that. That was poorly designed. Now, I don't know if this is screen accurate as far as having this cut here, but it's, you know, once again, it's not in line with the hinge. So that's it. That's it. You're not aiming down the sights or even, even firing low from the hip with this guy. That's all you get. That is absolutely terrible. Midsection, swivel, decent crunch, very good back, and some side-to-side -side tilt, legs, you know, just like all of them. They get up to there if you rotate them out a little bit. Thigh cut hidden behind the armor. Double knees that get all the way up to there. Okay, yeah. And then feet down all the way. Feet up a little bit. And you've got some swivel at the ankle here. Coming back up to arms. There's a swivel at the elbow, swivel at the wrist. Oh, man. Is that side to side? It is side to side on the right. And, of course, side to side on the left. Yeah. Terrible articulation on this one. And accessories for the First Order Stormtrooper Officer. Here we have an SE-44C. And this is a cool-looking blaster. The barrel's a little bit bent. Uh, but overall, it's a cool sculpt. I like the paint. And it's a pretty sweet-looking little pistol. And here's the other weapon that the First Order Officer comes with. And this is the F-11D. So this is the successor to the E-11. Okay, the F-11D. Cool-looking blaster. Got a cute little scope up there. Got the power pack on that side. Cool sculpt and very cool paint. And there he is holding the SE-44C, and it goes in the hand pretty well. You know, that does not look bad. But as you see, okay, he's firing in this direction, but he's looking in this direction. If I turn the head in the direction that he's firing, it runs into the pauldron, which in turn pushes the arm down. So he cannot be looking in the direction that he's firing up here. It just pushes the arm right back down. Now you can have it down here like that, okay. Still doesn't look good. It doesn't look natural at all. Uh, <laughs> that's terrible. Okay, there's that. That's about all you can do. And let's see how this little, yeah, the hole in his thigh works very well for pistol storage. Um, yeah, I think this is where that's gonna stay. And here he is with the F11D. And again, these elbows are absolutely horrible. He can't even put two hands on this weapon unless you do this just like touching the top of it. He cannot, he cannot hold this weapon with two hands. That's pretty poor. I mean, you've got, you've got horizontal hinges. You have elbows that are easily some of the worst in the line. Um, here, let me work on this a little bit more. Golly. All right, there. You can do that. Turn his head, firing low from the hip. Still doesn't look natural at all. Um, yeah, okay, there he is with it in two hands. But no, that just doesn't look good. It just doesn't look good. So I may just have him on the shelf with the the carbine down here by his side. Maybe bend this elbow a little bit, you know, like he's fiddling with his belt. Um, that right there actually does not look terrible. He's just chilling. He's just standing there with the blaster down by his side. I think I'm going to keep him like this. All right, so here's the four troopers once again in the poses that I'm going to keep them in for now. So I'm going to go stick them on the shelf and let's see what they look like there. Okay, so starting with the Phase 1 Clone Commander, I have him over here with Yoda because of this scene right here. You know, we did see those two together in Episode 2, and I think he looks very good there. That yellow, especially right next to Ayla, the yellow and the blue together, man, that looks good. And the Phase 2 clone, you know, the all-white, I just put him over here in the Andor section, okay, with this other all-white Phase 2 clone next to the Imperial officer there, all right, because of this scene, okay, that totally works, and I'm happy to have another all-white Phase 2 clone there. And the battle-damaged Stormtrooper, I just put him over here with this other battle-damaged Stormtrooper. So this is the one that came in the pack with all the blast accessories, so I thought he would fit in nicely over here with him. I just sort of have him behind the Sand Trooper, you know, you can still see him. And I think he looks pretty good there. And here is the First Order Stormtrooper officer. And I think he looks great on the shelf there with the other First Order troopers. Now, sadly, that pauldron does sort of blend in with those red boxes. I mean, you can still kind of see it. But, I mean, it's a good-looking figure. It's a shame it's so not posable. But I'm pretty happy with how he looks there. So, bottom line, I think it's a pretty cool set. You know, granted, they're older. The articulation's not great. But I think, overall, they look very good, especially this one. For me, this is worth the price of admission right here, the Commander. Love the yellow. 
The Phase 2, it's nice to have another clean Phase 2 clone on the shelf. The Imperial, hmm, posed like this, it covers up that stupid looking battle damage, you know, but overall, it's fine. Now, the First Order Officer, I do love the look of him, but man, he's he just doesn't pose worth a flip. But I think all four look great. But just like always, I would love to hear from you guys. So comment below and let me know what you think of the 2015 Amazon exclusive Trooper 4 pack. And if you enjoy videos on Star Wars The Black Series, smack like and subscribe if you're new. And don't forget to turn on notifications. I would certainly appreciate it. And something else I urge you to consider, and that is joining the channel. It's only 99 cents a month. You can become a member of the 112th Battalion. You'll have access to perks and sneak peeks and all kinds of other goodies. I would definitely appreciate that. But just like always, just want to thank you all so much for watching. See you guys next time.